Are you here for an inspirational talk, a success story, a trailblazing set of events to feel elated and happy? Are you? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm here today to talk to you about failure. In fact, I would like to start by a few of my own failures. Over the past 10 years, here at Al-Quds University and the Palestinian Neuroscience Initiative, I have trained 150 students on neuroscience research. Only 15 of them ultimately fulfilled their training and moved to graduate degrees. I have aimed to bring in $40 million of research funding. And ultimately, I just managed to bring two of these, $2 million. I've been rejected 38 times by international journals for publishing papers. My nomination for international awards was rejected eight times. And I assure you, I still have plenty of failure ahead. But let's think about our lives. Think about your own life. What is failure? And what is success? Isn't success just the tip of the iceberg? Reflect on that. So over the past 10 years, in addition to failing a lot, I've actually spent my time trying to understand the brain substrates for how failure happens, what supports it in the context of avoidance, threat, risk, and try to see what can we do in order to change our perception of failure. The main lesson I learned over the past 10 years is that our brains are built to process failure much better than they're built to process reward. If you lose, you learn much better than if you succeed. So how can we capitalize on that? How can we use our brains more efficiently in order to fail better? Especially here in our context in Palestine. Failure after failure after failure at multiple levels. How can we live with that? How can we use this as a source of motivation and innovation? The first and most important step that I would like to share with you today is acknowledgement. Acknowledge your failure and hold active responsibility. If you look at what your brain is doing, your brain processes loss at double the speed. It processes gain. If you look at the networks that support failure in your brains, they span your brains inside out and upside down. So when you do not acknowledge your failure, when you're not actively holding responsibility of your failures, you're literally fighting your own brain. But one might actually ask, so how is that different from being passive, from saying, okay, I failed? It is all about doing. It is all about being active. Acknowledgement, however, does not mean defeat. Holding responsibility does not mean beating yourself or blaming yourself for your failures. It means being actively seeking solutions, acknowledging failure, failure, being at peace with failure. When asked about his 1,000 failures to make the light bulb, Thomas Edison said, I didn't fail 1,000 times. In fact, I discovered 1,000 times not to make a light bulb. So look at this logic here. How is Edison teaching, actually literally teaching us to value failure? How should we think about failure? It is still a trial. It is still a sincere effort. And it is still a learning opportunity. It is your responsibility to positively value failure in order to use it to become better. And ultimately, you can't see beauty in the very ugly. As people say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Here in Palestine, the most common pattern of explaining failure is the circumstances. It's very difficult. al awda right? If somebody is late for a meeting, the first thing that, you, that would come in mind is, okay, there are checkpoints, it's very difficult, you know the situation. 
And I'm not speaking against that. All of this is true. This is actually what we call in cognitive neuroscience contextual learning. In other words, your environment dictates your responses. So it doesn't, it's not anymore an active choice that you're making. So one might ask, so what, what can I do? Change the environment? Well, I wouldn't really count on that, you know. It's not going to happen. At least not, not, very, not, not anytime soon. But you can change yourself. And you can become better at acknowledging your own failures, as, as I stated earlier. In addition to this, you can adopt proper active avoidance strategies. And these could be very, very, very simple things. Leave earlier the meetings. Be prepared for any obstacles that you might be facing. Acknowledge your failure and hold responsibility when it happens. Last year, I had the pleasure of attending a conference where I met 14 Nobel laureates in the field of physiology or medicine. I had it on myself as an aim that I wanted to ask as many of them as possible, how did you make it here? How did you succeed? And surprisingly, I got one single answer from each and every one I asked. It was mere luck. So I, I, I thought to myself, well, you know, apparently the Nobel laureate's luck is certainly different than my luck, you know? My luck means I do something once, I succeed once, and maybe get a Nobel Prize. But apparently for a Nobelist, they try 1,000 times for just one time to work. And this is how they define luck. The great Al Albert Einstein says, you never fail until you stop trying. But if you continuously fail, failure after failure after failure, does it really mean that you are actually doing the right thing? And this happens constantly in the environment that we're living in. Repeated failures. But you should think at that point, why is the approach that I'm using being repeated? Why am I repeating the same exact approach if it's not really producing anything other than failure? You need to know that actually with repetitive failures, it becomes extremely difficult for the brain to get out of failure, to get out of that baseline that you're building. It leads to a series of chains of, of, of failures that ultimately result in your brain not fulfilling its own capacity, not fulfilling its own abilities. And therefore, whenever you see something not working, do not persevere, persevere. And as, as, as people say, you cannot fix a problem by using the same kind of thinking that you used when you started that problem. I reflect on my life and my successes and my failures almost on a daily basis. It takes me back thinking about how high of expectations I used to put in everything that I would like to do. I want to go to the moon with everything that I, I try to do. But then at the same time, I'm truly grateful that every time I had these high expectations, I got to the point where something would bring me to the pragmatic real life and show me that expectations should be laid according to your reality. Live in the moment. Live now. Live here. Do not worry about what happened in the past. Don't think about the future. Your time is now. Ultimately, it is your journey. You put in the colors. You create the scenes. You walk the walks. My journey took me through the neural, the cognitive, and even the depression and anxiety realms, both physically and metaphysically, just to make one realization, one simple, single realization, that life is a mere reflection. But it's our responsibility as humans to keep going. Going back to Einstein, he says, life is like riding a bicycle. You have to keep going to maintain the balance. I truly wholeheartedly wish you all a lot of successful failures. May you all fail plenty. 
and may you all succeed plenty. Thank you.